Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, we're going to talk about the difference between object data and mesh data, and why that's significant. Now, object data is nothing more than a container for mesh data. What I mean by that is, even though we see the object in the outliner, that is really insignificant. What matters is the green icon for mesh data and the mesh data itself. So if we go into edit mode, we have currently a cube object. And that makes sense because we created a cube for this example. But if we also then add in a UV sphere and move this over, we don't get a new UV sphere object in our outliner. And we don't have a new UV sphere mesh data applied to the cube. What we get is that this UV sphere has now become a part of the cube object and the cube mesh data. Now, we can see this and everything works just like normal. And so this is just mesh data that has been added into the cube object data. All right. So that's kind of super important. But this little revelation between the difference of object data and mesh data actually allows us to do some pretty cool things. So next, let's talk about uh, duplicates, linked duplicates, and changing around mesh data between objects. All right, so since an object is nothing more than a container for mesh data, how do we see what mesh data is actually contained inside the object? Well, to find that information, all you have to do is go to your Properties panel and then down to your Object Data tab, which is our upside down triangle icon. Once there, look at the top and you will see a drop down uh, and it will have all of the mesh data that was created inside your scene. Now, I've created a few objects here. We're going to just ignore them for the most part. But you can also see that this mesh data has a spot for you to change the name. And that's really important if you were trying to kind of keep your mesh data and objects um, aligned, which I highly recommend based on what I'm going to teach you in just a second. And that is the difference between simply creating duplicates and creating linked duplicates. So let's bring in the other objects that I've currently got in the scene, my cup and the poor recreation of the Skyrim Minor Potion. All right, so on the cup object in my outliner, I have attached the cup data. And what I can do actually with any of these objects is change the data that the object is holding. So if I select the cube and say, I don't want it to hold cube data, I want it to hold the cup data. I can do that no problem. And now the cup is being held by both the cup object and the cube object. I can do the same thing with the potion and say, hey, I also want it to hold the cup data. And now I've created three objects that are holding the exact same mesh data. And that's indicated by the number next to the name of the mesh data itself. Now let's just put this back at potion um, and address the fact that some of these have zeros next to them. If it has a zero next to the name, so if we have zero cube or zero cup 001 or whatever, what that means is that mesh data is not currently linked to an object in the scene or in the Blender file. And since it's not linked to an object, when we save the file and reopen that file, this data will no longer be there. So it will, it will just say, I'm unlinked, I'm disappearing because you clearly don't need me. Here's the thing. Why is all of this important? Well, it's important because we can create duplicates or we can create linked duplicates. So just a reminder, creating a duplicate is Shift D and then you get to translate it around in your scene. So maybe we move this over on the Y axis and do the same thing again and move it over on the Y axis. So we've created duplicates here of the potion. But what you might have noticed is that if we check the mesh data, we have potion, which is our original data, and we have Potion 001 and Potion 002 because we created duplicates that are not linked together. But if we wanted to, say, not create uh, duplicates like that, if we wanted to link them together, we could hit Alt-D and do the same thing. And now we are creating a new object, but we're not creating any more mesh data. And that is really neat because what that allows us to do is say, okay, I've got two potions here, they're going to look the exact same, but maybe this part is too tall. So maybe we just need to select 
all of these faces here up at the top and move this down a little bit on the z-axis. Well, when we do that, what we get is the other object has the exact same transformation occur to it. But it's not because we're transforming the other object, it's because we're changing the mesh data contained inside this object and they're sharing that mesh data. Now, that's pointed out a little bit further by I can select the objects here or I can select the faces here, but if I try to select the faces on the other object, I'm not actually going to be able to do so because I'm not in edit mode on Potion 001. I'm in edit mode on Potion the original. And so I cannot change this information. Now, here's the thing. What if we create a few linked duplicates? So let's create another linked duplicate of this, and maybe we create some linked duplicates of this. So just Alt D. And now I don't want all of these to be linked in the way they are. Maybe I want this cup to be its own thing, but I wanted to use this mesh as a jumping off point. Well, I can click on that number that shows us how many objects are using that linked data and create a single user copy. And so maybe I'll call this cup like a beer mug or beer cup, whatever. Right, and so now I can go in here and grab the top and maybe scale it out a little bit more and maybe extrude up. Um, and now that's gonna give us a bit of a different face. Now that looks goofy, it looks dumb, but you get the idea. So this is all really important because if we're building a scene in Blender, we can actually just make a bunch of duplicates and place them around in our scene where we need them. And then if we realize that something is out of place, then we only have to change that information on one object and it changes it on all of them. And that just makes life so much easier. Now, while you change the mesh data, you can still manipulate the object data and so you could move these around and kind of rotate them or place them wherever you need to and it's not going to change the mesh data itself, it's only going to change that object data. And so this is a really useful tool uh, for playing around and setting up your scenes to the level of degree that you might like without having to create a bunch of objects that look exactly the same or worrying about having to change a bunch of objects over and over again if you have to make a slight change to one tiny piece. All right, so that's object data, mesh data, and why it all matters and why it's important. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I will see you in the next video.